Welcome to the Million Pound Mission Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Shibley, the PhD, the previously heavy dude, and I'm on a one million pound mission. I've personally lost over 100 pounds. I've helped my hometown lose over 35,000 pounds, and now I'm on a mission to produce over one million pounds of results by helping you gain clarity about what you need to do to reach your goals and give you the confidence to take action. And my friends, the perfect time to start taking action is now. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of the Million Pound Mission Podcast. It's your buddy, Adam, the PhD, the previously heavy dude, and this is episode number 208, the Female Fitness State of the Union, with my friends Joy and Claire from the Girls Gone Wad Podcast. I'm so excited to share this one with you, but real quick, uh, I want you to hang out after the shows. I have something special, something I've never done before until this very podcast I'm going to give you 10 days for free inside of my Transformation Reboot program. We all know that I'm a terrible salesperson, and I have a hard time describing how unique and special this is. So that my my bright idea was like, hey, I'm going to let them just take a peek inside this thing, experience it firsthand for themselves, and you will realize how truly special this, this is. So. Hang out after the episode. I'll give you all of the details. It's not available on the website. Uh, you got to go to the show notes link and get all that set up. So let's talk about my friends, Joy and Claire. Now, one of the areas of health and fitness that I'm most pumped up about right now is the fact that we are losing a lot of that misconception about you know what's a boy workout or, oh, this is a girl workout. And we're focusing more on just getting healthier and getting happier and it makes me super excited as a father of young children you know I've got one boy uh, Henry and my daughter Hannah and they're going to grow up in a world where they can just express themselves through their fitness in any way that suits them and I'm especially excited for my daughter Hannah because you know she's going to grow up in an environment where if she wants to do ballet cool Uh, or if she wants to do heavy deadlifts also cool and I think that's just so so exciting so this week I'm bringing in some powerhouse fitness experts that are at the forefront of this movement that is empowering females to get out and do their thing when it comes to fitness. Uh, I knew that this was going to be a very special, super fun, and interesting conversation. And my friends Joy and Claire, they over-delivered. So uh, Joy and Claire, these are the, li- the dynamic duo uh, behind the Girls Gone Wad podcast. They're super passionate about leading by example and helping as many people as possible along the way. Uh, I just love their enthusiasm for fitness, their authenticity. Uh, they just bring that every day to the table as they're out there. They're not afraid to get real, share about their own struggles, sticking points, and uh, they just allow you a look inside of their own uh, story with their own fitness journey. And I love that about them. So in this episode, we get real interesting real quick. Uh, we talk about how they formed this podcastic, podtastic super team. Uh, we talk about their advice on uh, if they were coaching Oprah, like how would they train her? We talk about that. That was a, a super funny uh, segment of the interview. Uh, then we, di- we dive deep into their opinion of the state of the union uh, in female fitness right now. Obviously, that was something that I really wanted to dig into with them. And uh, again, they just really over-delivered in that, in that area of our discussion. Uh, we talk about the most common misconceptions about training in the CrossFit style. And we also talk about where they thought female fitness would be heading over the next 10 years. So I'm really, really excited to introduce you to Joy and Claire. I feel like if you're somebody that kind of binge listens to my show and enjoys my vibe, you will really enjoy their show, whether you're into CrossFit or not. Like You're just going to really enjoy their vibe. So uh, without further ado, let's dive into this one. It's episode number 208, the Female Fitness State of the Union with my friends Joy and Claire. All right, Claire and Joy, how are you doing today? Welcome to the Million Pound Mission podcast. We're so happy to be here. Thank Hi. you. Well, I'm psyched. Um, we were chatting a little bit before about, uh, you know, just the uh, how I'm very, very, very excited about the state of the female fitness, uh, where things are going. I've got a young daughter. I'm super psyched about her growing up in a different era than I did of things like, boy push-ups and, and girl push-ups and stuff like that. Like that's not going to exist. But before I get too ahead of myself, uh, I want to start with kind of the, the girls gone wad 
origin story. So I'm interested in knowing how you formed this podtastic, wadtastic super team of female awesomeness. So um, I, don't, I don't know, Joy, if you want to kick it off and, and just kind of start how yeah. the, the origin story happened here. Um, so I'm very excited to have this conversation. We have all the answers, just so you know. Just so yes. you know, we have all the answers. <laughs> about fitness related to females. No. Uh, yeah. For those of you who are not familiar with our podcast, uh, Girls Gone WOD, W-O-D. W-O-D stands for Workout of the Day in the CrossFit Lingo Community. Um, and we started this about five and a half years ago as an effort to put female voices out into the CrossFit community. Uh, I was a pretty avid podcast listener way back in the day before it really blew up. And I just remember feeling like there wasn't a ton out there for females, uh, especially in the CrossFit community. And so I wanted to eat, breathe, sleep, everything CrossFit. Um, and I, uh, Claire and I knew each other as acquaintances in the gym that we went to one day, just, I, I approached her and said, do you want to start a CrossFit podcast or do you want to start a podcast? And she was like, well, uh, sure. I kind of listened to tar- t- to car talk. What's, what's a podcast, you know, like what, what is this world? And, um, you know, it was pretty new to both of us, but we both just dove in and the next thing you knew we were recording and five and a half years later, we've been doing it every single week. So, um, Claire and I often joke that if you would have told us five and a half years ago when we started that we'd be doing this every week for five and a half years, we'd be like, you're crazy and you're smoking crack and we're never going to do that. <laughs> and here we are. And we have a really, really, really great following. Yeah, that, that's what it looks like. And it, it just, from listening to you guys show, it just seems like you have such a natural connection. You feed off of each other really well. You do great interviews. Like I really, really enjoyed like the Ben Thank Greenfield, you. you know, all these interviews that, that you guys have been, especially lately that uh, have just been really awesome you know you're getting big guests and things like that what uh if you guys don't mind let, let's talk a little bit about podcasting because i i noticed like some of the episodes i listen to i i can sense you like i want to talk about podcasting a little bit more than fitness today um, yeah so if you don't mind let's chat a little bit about podcasting and so what uh what would you say uh, claire what's like your favorite part about podcasting you've been going for five plus years now what's the thing that you get most jazz about Um, honestly, just like the people who we've gotten to know along the way, we have many people who are our listeners who I would now consider family friends. Um, you know, who, if they come into town, they look us up. If we go to their town, we look them up and it's just all the people we've met along the way. Like we always kind of joke that when you're podcasting, you know, and you're sitting in like your little bunker by yourself podcasting, you're like, is anybody out there? Like, is anyone actually listening to this? And so it's so cool to make those real life connections with people. And I think also Joy and I both get a lot out of it in terms of, um, you know, we always kind of talk about like the thing we were going for is that moment where somebody hears us talk about something honestly, or hears a guest speak about something and says, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one. And, you know, we get that feeling too. Like we have both gone through things and processed them on the podcast. And then we'll have people write in and be like, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one. And we're like, I thought I was the only one. <laughs> like, so it goes both ways, which is nice. Yeah. Now you guys are both married. Am I, am I correct with that? Yep. You're correct. So, do your spouses understand what the hell a podcast even is? Because my wife, <laughs> like, like, I was like, I got ranked in iTunes. She's like, I really don't care. Uh, my my husband's pretty well versed in the podcast world, and he's he's an early adopter with a lot of things, and so I think he knows the importance of rankings for us. I think he believes in us way more than I do. Like, there's times when he'll say things like, "Oh, well, when you have blah blah blah," or "Hey, this podcast did this," and it's like one of the top two podcasts in iTunes, and he'll like compare us to that, and I'm like. Uh, you you really believe in us like i appreciate the uh enthusiasm i don't know if we'll ever get to that point but it's just it's really funny but he's he's super jazzed and he loves what we do and he knows that we love it and i think um it's funny though he doesn't listen to it he doesn't like to cross those worlds so yeah. he just kind of stays as a distant observer and he supports me from afar as far as like he doesn't listen to the podcast that's awesome but he'd be think, still, still willing to judge your ranking ability and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, he'll be like, well, Lewis Howes did this. And we're like, wow, cool. Good for him. <laughs> he's like, you should talk to his sponsors. We're like, uh-huh, yeah, we're working on that. Um, my husband is kind of the 
similar, but almost the opposite. Like he doesn't really get, you know, he'll be like, how many followers do you have now on Instagram? And I'll be like, oh, you know, or at this number, he's like, oh my gosh, that's so many. And I'm like, not really, <laughs> but he, and he, but he definitely does listen. So sometimes I'll say something and I'll be like, oh, Brandon's going to get mad. I said that, or like, I'm going to hear about that. He's going to be like, I'm not like that. Um, it's especially tricky when we're talking about our husbands and I'm like, I'll say something and he'll kind of bring it up later. <laughs> yeah. My husband overheard me saying something last week and he was just in the next room. Oh, um, no. it, cause he doesn't listen to the podcast, but I was talking about something and he heard me and he was like, you made me sound bad. I was like, no, I promise you always look like the good guy. <laughs> so we just have to be very careful with the context of what we say about them. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. I've crossed that line a few times. I was like, ooh, probably shouldn't have said that. And, you know, the word might get back to the boss on that one. Yeah, uh, well, it's funny because, like, they're not signing up for this. And, like, we're putting our lives out there. And so I have to, like, be very careful of what I say. And, and for the most part, we're pretty respectful of them. Like, we have nothing but good things to say about them. But it is one of our kind of shticks for the podcast is we talk a lot about marriage hacks and relationship hacks and how we kind of have to, like, constantly do this to to stay married or else you kill your spouse um and we kind of say it tongue-in-cheek because we love our partners and so you know it's something relatable that a lot of people um when they listen they're like oh my gosh this helped me so much with my relationship because people are actually talking about this yeah well let's talk about that a little bit because i get a lot of questions from people that especially in the weight loss community people are trying to lose weight they're trying to get healthy but they're the only one doing that like the they're, you know, the one that's trying to eat healthier, the one that are going to workouts, but their spouse isn't. And they, there's a little bit of back and forth there where, you know, sometimes I feel like the other person really does want to be healthy, but they just aren't ready to make that commitment yet. So they kind of project some of their, their bullshit on, onto their, their partner. So oh, what, sure. what kind of uh, advice do you have in that, in that area? Well, can you relate to that first and foremost? I'm just curious. No, my, my wife's physical as a physical therapist. So she okay. also so you guys supportive. Are both yeah. Super super healthy. Yeah. Um you know, we've we've talked about this too on our show and whatever it is, it doesn't matter if it's weight loss, if it's working out, if it's eating right, if it's taking up a new hobby, you just cannot control what the other person does. I don't care how much you think you can, you absolutely cannot control that person. What you can do is uh make yourself as healthy as possible and encourage yourself as a partnership to be as healthy as possible. I think you owe it to your partner to be healthy, but how that looks for and is defined by one another is completely different, could be completely different. So I think there's a lot of um, mistakes people make when they take up a new workout uh, program or dieting program that they think the, the partner has to come along with them. And that's just not the case all the time. They're in completely different spots. And then they can also confuse that with like, oh, this isn't going to work. Like we aren't supporting each other. And it's like, no, it just means you have different definitions of what the health and wellness look like. And you have to communicate about that. The other thing is sometimes when people get healthier, the other partner who chooses maybe to, to do health in a different way gets jealous and insecure that if this other person gets quote unquote healthy and quote unquote looks better, that they're going to be leaving that partner. So there's kind of like a threat of like aesthetically, if you start to look better, then you're going to not be as attracted to that person. So there's like all these messy things that can kind of get into play when you're talking about couples. But um, for the most part, we always are like, you cannot control your partner nor should you in anything that they do. But what you want to do is like walk side by side, supporting each other and trying to understand what each other needs as far as support on this health and wellness journey. And, you know, my husband will never, like probably never join a CrossFit gym. It's just not his thing. It's just not his thing. And for the longest time, I really was like, oh, I'm so bummed he doesn't like this. And what I came to realize is like, that's just who he is. Like I would never all of a sudden just take up like, I don't know something like I'm, I'm like, I've tried so many sports. What would I not do? I would never take up soccer. I've never taken up soccer. Like soccer <laughs> terrifies me. Um, and it's just one of those things like he will never do that. And I had to come to a place where I'm like, Oh, I love and appreciate you for who you are in this Avenue. So what, uh, n- now Claire, do you guys do like family dinners? This is another topic that comes up a lot of people think that we have to, I'm all for eating at the same time and being spending that time together, but people feel a lot of times pressure to everybody has to eat the same thing. Uh, what What are your thoughts on that? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So I have a three-year-old who, you know, already just eats, like you could put a chocolate cake in front of him. And if he's not in the mood for chocolate cake, he's not going to eat it. Right. Um, and that's a bad example because three-year-olds are always in the mood for chocolate cake. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but then my husband is has probably the fastest burning metabolism of anyone I've ever met. He is six feet tall, like, and struggles to stay above 160. And people, wow. you know, will hear that and be like, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. Like, you know, you can eat whatever you want. And he's like, you know, actually it's tiring. It's a lot of work to eat that much. And to, you know, one of the biggest stressors, frankly, in his life is like, where is he? He's a nurse. So he's on his feet all day. And, and, you know, he has a very, very short lunch break. And it's really like, he has to really be super mindful and super planned out about how and when and what he's going to eat. And so in the past, when we have done, um, like a whole thirties or we've done zone between, I've tried just about everything out there under the sun and nine times out of 10, you know, he'll just kind of say like, you know, I support, like, let me know what I can do to support you, but I am going to be making pasta for dinner, you know? And like, that's just what I need right now. And, and at first, um, especially when we, when I first started eating paleo, like, you know, when back in whatever it was, seven, eight years ago, when I started doing CrossFit, if, when you started CrossFit, you started paleo, like that was the thing. The rule. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and he kind of got into it, but after a couple of weeks, I was like, you know, I just need more carbs than this. Like I, I need those fast burning carbs, like that you get from grains and um, he was just feeling really bad. And at first I was like, I can't believe you're not on board with this. Like, you know, and then also I'm in there, like, I'm so drinking the paleo Kool-Aid. I'm like, you're going to die of heart disease at 35. <laughs> like, didn't you read Rob Wolf? Um, but, <laughs> but the way that we kind of do it is we'll have pretty much like a base meal. And usually that's just like, a, it's like, okay, we all, we know tonight we're all having chicken. And then on top of that, maybe I'll have like, you know, a side of veggies and something, and then he'll add an additional starch to that. And then our three-year-old will just sort of pick and choose between, you know, that, and then also maybe crackers and cheese. And it's, I think a similar thing to what Joy was saying, where we just kind of have had to get to this agreement of like, we're all doing the best that we can. We're all making the healthiest choices for ourselves. And, you know, like last night I went through the drive through McDonald's with my three-year-old. If my husband had been in the car, he would have just glared at me. The whole, like, ne- it wouldn't have happened. Never in a million years would I have gone through the drive-thru with him in the car. Um, you know, but so, like. I joke right? all the time that whenever Claire has fast food and she's, like, on her way to my house, she has to, like, dump the trash in my trash can. I do. <laughs> he shames me when I go. What I, which, like, I get, right? Fast food is objectively bad for you. Like, we all know this. But at the same time, you know, he has gotten to the point where he's like, you eat this a couple times a year. Like you're not, you know, trying to sabotage the health and longevity of our family by like getting some chicken McNuggets. And so I think it's also just that perspective that you want to have and allow within your family of like, we're all doing the best we can. None of us want to feel like crap. And we're all just kind of trying to figure out what that looks like for each of us. And if that means that you know, Brandon eats a bowl of cereal after this like beautiful roasted chicken that I've slaved over. Then I stopped being offended by that. Yeah. No hard feelings. No hard feelings. No lingering hard feelings. <laughs> <laughs> now that I just remember there was a time when I first started practicing like intermittent fasting and doing some long, like 24 hour fast and things like that. There was a moment when my wife ate like a salad in front of me and like she was just eating a salad, you know, and I was like, how could you do that in front of me right now? I'm so pissed. I can't but, believe you do this to me. Yeah. How could you, I, how could you do this to me? Yeah. And I'm, um, I'm, I'm eight months pregnant right now and my husband will be like drinking wine and like he'll finish like two glasses of wine and then he'll look over and he'll be like, is this bothering you? I'm like, could I ask me that two glasses ago? <laughs> <I'm just laughs> <kidding. laughs> ah. And like, we'll go out to dinner and I'll be like, are you going to get a drink? And he'll go, well, I just feel bad. I'm like, you don't feel bad at home. What's stopping you now? <laughs> so that one I get a little bitter about. <laughs> the truth comes out. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's classic husband moves right there. That I feel like we're, it's like a delayed reaction that we have. Like, wait a second. Totally. We get in our husband fog and we don't really, like the blinders are on like, yeah, I'm just drinking some wine now. Oh, there's other people in the room. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty uh, typical. Now, you both mentioned CrossFit. You guys are CrossFit 
uh, certified, big into the CrossFit community. I feel like CrossFit is still, even though it's been around, it's on TV, I still feel like it's, it's misunderstood. And a lot of people have, you know, there's pretty big misconceptions out there. So what do you feel like are kind of the primary misconceptions that you try to knock out when you are introducing CrossFit to somebody? Uh, the biggest misconception, I think, especially from females, is I'm going to get, quote unquote, bulky, and I'm going to put on too much muscle. Um, that was like probably from day one when we started the podcast, what people would write in about. And it's like, I want to try CrossFit, but I, w- I don't want to get bulky. So we would constantly kind of make fun of that word. It's like, okay, so you know, you can't really get bulky. Like, what are you going to just wake up one day and all of a sudden you're going to have these huge muscles? Like, it doesn't work that way, yeah, especially for women. You're not going to turn around and be like, oh, shit, I got bulky. Yeah. yeah. There's, this doesn't happen there's, like that. You can make along the way. Yeah. Um, then the second one is that CrossFit is dangerous, which it used to be. I think it was really, uh, when it was newer, it was a little rogue and people weren't doing it as safely as they should, but coaching has come a long way. And I think programming has come a long way. And, uh, you know, no matter where you go, you could get injured if you're at a 24 hour fitness doing something improperly. And so I think that's another big misconception. And then the third one who, for people who really don't understand CrossFit, think that every single workout lays you on the floor and you're barfing in a, in a trash can. Like it just, it just isn't like that anymore. Um, and I do say anymore because I do think in the olden days, that's kind of how it was like, you know, the badge of honor was like, you know, the mascot was pukey. Like that just hasn't been around for years. And so those would probably be the top three. And, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a, there's a bunch of others, but I think as far as the intimidation of people like walking in a CrossFit gym, oh, the last one I would say is you have to be fit in order to do CrossFit. And this just could not be further from the truth. Yeah. That's the one I was going to say. It was that people would be like, well, I want to get in shape before I try CrossFit. And I'd be like, uh, what are you going to the CrossFit gym for? And I actually yeah. remember reading an interview that CrossFit posted or just like a little anecdote where there was this older man who was a priest or not a priest, a pastor. And, um, he had a friend who was like coached to this CrossFit gym. And he, he kept telling the friend, like, you know, I just want to get in shape before I try CrossFit. And the friend said, well, would you tell someone they need to get their life in order before coming to church? And he was like, well, no, that's where you go to get your life in order. And he was like, Exactly. Touché. And the pastor showed up, you know, to class the next day. Now, another um, point that I feel like needs to be clarified is I have a lot of people that say, well, I'm really nervous about the competitive nature. Like some people are scared of being compared to others. Some of them are afraid that they will, like they, they know they're over competitive. And they're like, I'm going to do something stupid because I'm too competitive. So how do you guys make suggestions around that point? Well, I think that's all personal. I mean, I've been that person who's been really stupid and been competitive and hurt myself. (laughs) I'm not saying that competitive equals stupid. I'm just saying that that I was not smart about the decisions I made because I just shouldn't have been doing it from a place of being competitive because it's a CrossFit gym. Now, it is an environment where it's really easy to get sucked into that. There's a leaderboard, your timed workouts, you're going against the clock. It is an environment that's going to really make you feel competitive with yourself and with others. And, um, you know, I think it just, it really is one of those things where you kind of have to evolve personally. I do enjoy the CrossFit gym for working out your bull crap. Um, so I, I would kind of like encourage you to work through your emotions in that way, because that's just something that I personally get a lot out of. Like I've evolved a ton at the beginning. I was constantly wanting to be first. That's all I cared about. When the open came around, I was a nervous wreck for every workout. And then over the years I wised up, I got older and I thought, what am I doing? Like I, it was important to me because it felt good and it felt accomplished. But at the same time, I just realized like, nah, that stress isn't really worth it anymore. And so I don't think I would have done it any other way, but I think that's, that's kind of like a personal journey that you have to go on. And I think it's kind of a cool one. Like where else do you kind of get to act out those emotions in life? Yeah. Yeah. You get the, the environment, you know, no matter what kind of gym you're at, the, the environment makes the experience. So like you said, you can do dumb things at any gym. Like I, I kind of yeah. grew up, I kind of grew up in a, in a meathead gym uh, where I interned in high school and it was just like the typical iron and machines yeah. and treadmills. I would see people 
fall down on the treadmills and damn near kill themselves every day. I mean, day. how many times have you seen people like walking backwards on a treadmill with like weights above their head or something? Like that's ridiculous. It's the best. It's the best part it about being in a gym. It's just like, oh my gosh, like what are you doing? And like people think CrossFit is dangerous. Like the things that you're doing on a, like you're going backwards on an elliptical, like facing the other way. Like give me a break. You, What on earth are people doing? I used to watch people in slow motion like as soon as someone would just bite it on the treadmill i'd run back to the office and do the instant replay on the security cameras and watch it in slow motion i was like this is amazing oh my god <laughs> yeah and it's always like the like the middle-aged guy and we're in a college town so some like yeah that young lady comes jogging next to him and he's like all right here we go haven't ran in 40 years but we're gonna give her hell now and it's always that guy that just busts his ass and oh, you know, just karma. roadkill yeah it's awesome. Now, um, we mentioned a little bit earlier about kind of the uh, the state of the union with female fitness. I'm really uh, intrigued on your thoughts on this because it's something I'm very, very, very excited about. Like I said, um, I'm excited about the environment my daughter's going to grow up in versus what I grew up in, like going to gym class and having like girl exercises, boy exercises, girl sports, boy sports. So if you were going to deliver the state of the union address on female fitness right now, what would that sound like? I think we are getting there. Um, you know, I think we've come a long way in like the last 10 years. The conversation has significantly evolved from, you know, he, here's your one body type that you may aspire to and come hell or high water, you will look like this. <clears throat> or more specifically, come hell or high water, you should want to look like this. And I think that CrossFit has helped with this, you know, in terms of weight training, but I also think just in general, you know, more people, I think social media has been a huge positive influence on this where you're seeing people with all different body types coming out of the woodwork and saying like, wait a minute, I'm an athlete too, you know, just because I'm a plus size or just because, you know, I have a disability or just because, you know, X, Y, Z, that doesn't make me less worthy of this title of athlete or less worthy to be at the gym or to have these similar goals or less worthy of being healthy. And, you know, I think also like the quote unquote body positivity or health at every size kind of movement has really forced people to realize like the size of your body and your body weight in and of itself is not indicative of anything. You know, those factors have to have other things to go with them. Like you can be quote unquote overweight and be way healthier than somebody who's at a, you know, quote unquote healthier BMI, but their blood markers or their respiratory health or whatever, or their cardiac endurance is way, way lower. And so, you know, we're seeing people and particularly women um, come forward and say, you know what, you may look at me and, and make certain assumptions about my health, but that's not the way it is. And so let's, you know, bring me into this conversation. I do think that we have swung the pendulum, um, like the strong is the new sexy thing, kind of just replaced one very difficult to attain ideal with another. You know, it's, it's hard for a lot of women to look really jacked. It's hard for a lot of women to build muscle and it's unhealthy for a lot of women to be lean enough to have visible muscles in that way when we think about strong as a new sexy. But I think what that has done is open the conversation to say there's more than one type of exercise. And if you start to dig into that, you know, let's talk about feeling strong. Let's talk about that feeling of, you know, getting in the gym and walking over to where all the boys are and picking up the weights and being like, get out of my way. I, I'm here and I know what I'm doing. And, you know, having them kind of look at you like, okay, great. Then you're here and you know what you're doing. And I think that can feel very validating. And I think, um, you know, women in particular are able to use that experience and that feeling and take it in other places in their life as well. Like if I can show up in the gym in a room full of bros, I can show up in the boardroom in a room full of bros and like walk in there and know what I'm doing. So I, I like, I really love that as well. That's awesome. That is awesome. What do you think, Joy? Well, I was thinking about this because we talk all the time about social media and how it's influenced our, our body images. And so what I think a lot of the times is that it's always existed. Like body image issues have existed for as long as we can remember since the female body existed. 
And so I think that social media just outed all of our insecurities out in the forefront for everyone to see. And now we have to deal with it. And so I think that there's, if there's a silver lining that we need to look at it that way is that, you know, we can complain all we want about the horrible things we're seeing on social media and how it's influencing our self-esteem. But to be honest, it was, it was just under the surface. We just kind of like shown the light on it with the huge spotlight and now we have to deal with it. And it's a good thing because I think at first, like what Claire was saying is like, we went from, you know, skinny was the uh, ideal and, you know, model thin was the ideal, um, relatively speaking. And then it swung to like, no, strong is the new sexy, strong is the new skinny or whatever, because we had to kind of revolt against it. And so there's always a revolt against the things that you're like really passionate about. And so I think what we've come to realize is like, no, like, let's embrace everybody. Like there doesn't have to be a side. We don't have to pick a side. So I think as far as like the future, I think it's evolving in such a good way of hopefully we're, we're going to move, we're going to continue to mo move towards acceptance. I think there's always going to be kind of like that beautiful aesthetic that magazines will continue to put out because that's just their business. It's their business to put things together and be pretty, but hopefully the representation of what pretty is uh, continues to evolve and more and be more inclusive. And we also talk about like, you know, throughout time in the same way that there's always been body images, there's always been a beauty standard, you know, and it's evolved over centuries, but there has, you know, even back, you think about like hearing about Cleopatra, you know, threading her eyebrows and, you know, the, the Queens who would powder their faces. Like there's always been those one weird tip to get like your man. Like the corsets that just cinch those waists. Yeah. Like there's always been. I mean, waist trainers thing. are back. Waist trainers are totally back. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so like it, that's always been there. Always, always, always. Far before the internet was even, you know, ever thought of. And it will always be there. There will always be just, I mean, it's completely natural for people to have references in the way that people look. You know, we're all attracted to different types of people and they're, um, you know, we can't honestly say like, I am attracted equally to every single body type or every single person, every single look out there, every single style and a million things go into that. And I think that that's, um, the other thing though, that we've kind of been forced to look at through social media and through Facebook and internet and all that kind of thing is like, okay, just because I don't necessarily find that attractive or that wouldn't be my goal, that doesn't make it any less than. Like it's still like you can want to look however the crap you want just because I don't, you know, like it goes back to the, oh, I don't want to be bulky. It's like, well, some women really want to look muscular. Yeah. They want those, you know, really big visible muscles. Other women freak out at just the thought of that. And there's not a right or wrong answer. If you want to be, have, vis, you know, large visible muscles, great. If you absolutely do not want that, that's fine too. Like you just got to do what works for you. And people also all the time are really like, well, what if I don't want to do CrossFit? And we're like, cool. Don't do CrossFit. Like find what you want to do. I mean, there's so many listeners that we have that don't even do CrossFit. They just like us because of our banter and realness about life and body image, which is, I think what we all can relate to. You don't necessarily have to be in any camp to be a female and relating to how this stuff influences us. Yeah, that's something I'm noticing too. And in fitness now, I'm seeing trends to like, like you said, the word camp, like there were definite like, oh, you're CrossFit. I'm Olympic lifting. It's not the same thing. You're dumb and I'm smart. Like that's like, you'd see a lot of powerlifting and, and uh, you know, the yoga people, but now it's just like, I feel like we're trending towards, let's just support people that want to go after some goals and get healthy. Their, their version of healthy, mentally, physically, emotionally happy and healthy. And that's, what I'm really fired up about, like that having my kids grow up in that environment really has me excited. And I'm, uh, I'm pretty pumped about that. Now, um, Claire, you mentioned the, uh, the, the word strong and feeling strong. I'm interested in, uh, picking both of your brains about the first time that you were doing a workout and you're like, damn, I feel strong. I, like, what were you doing? You're like, I feel strong. Oh my gosh, the first time. I can't even think about it. I mean, I'm sure that it was probably a moment where for me, I have that feeling when I have convinced myself I can't do something and then I do it. And typically, I mean, we used to have this hilarious coach named Coach Mike 
And there would be workouts where like I would put, you know, tens on my bar or something and I'd go out and maybe the workout would start for a run with a run. And I'd come back in and he would have like put more weight on my bar without me knowing because he'd be like, I, you know, he knew me well enough to know that I was just nervous about it and that I could safely do more weight. And then at the end of the workout, he'd be like, you know, I'd tell him, oh, I used 55 pounds. And he'd be like, nope, that was 65. And, you know, that kind of helped me to get out of my own head and realize like, hey, I can try hard things and do hard things. And that kind of became my mantra for a while that I can do hard things of just trying to get myself to that place of this may totally freak me out, but that does not mean that I can't do it. Um, And I think that that's one thing that weight training in particular can really be like, I don't think, I don't know that you get that a lot of other places outside of weight training, that moment of like, look what I just did. And that's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I love those moments when coaches are like sitting next to you. I had one recently doing a handstand walk. Um, And I love, it's almost like a testament that coaches need to believe in you more than you believe in yourself and how that impacts your performance. Because I was doing a handstand walk a couple months ago and just my coach was standing right next to me and he's like, no, walk farther. And I was like, no, I can't. And just him standing there, I like walked really far than farther than I would have allowed myself. But um, back to your question about like, uh, just when you feel strong is the first thing that came to mind for me was uh, when I first just really started putting weight on the bar and anything that's kind of really open over my head when I'm like have it over my head and I can just drop the bar on the ground. I always love that feeling. Cause like sometimes I just want to like throw the bar on the ground. Cause yeah. I'm like, it's really heavy. And then I just can get some anger out at the same time. Cause you're not going to hurt anything when you drop the bar <laughs> at a CrossFit gym at least. Um, and that's just like, I, there's nothing like it. I can tell whenever there's, you know, weeks that I don't do CrossFit, I'm like, Oh, I just miss having my hands on a barbell. <laughs> Yeah, and I know I uh, I can totally relate to you there. The the feeling it's almost like you just dominated that weight, but it's it's mentally it's a little bit more than a weight because maybe you had a bad day or maybe somebody pissed you off or maybe yeah. some, somebody at work told you that you couldn't do something and you kind of bring that and it, it by dominating that weight by accomplishing that thing that most people can't do you, you kind of own that situation too. And not only that is I feel like for females especially females aren't always seen as people who are doing that. Like it's not, I mean, in CrossFit, yeah, all the time. I think CrossFit really helped bring weightlifting to the females, but there's times when I'm like, you know, I have really heavy weight over my head and I'm like, this feels really amazing. Like superwoman. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Now I, I was pretty lucky early on. I mentioned the, the gym that I kind of grew up in um, I was exposed to very, very, very strong females. Like from day one, we had two Olympic athletes that worked out there. One was a, a shot putter that was in three different Olympics. Her name's Connie Price Smith. And so I walk in, you know, I'm a high school intern and Connie is six foot three, 220 pounds. She could deadlift 500 pounds. She could stand underneath the basketball goal, jump up and dunk a basketball, like impressive as hell and so my all my like preconceived notions of what s- strong females strong males are I'm like she could kick my ass straight up every day of the week and everything uh so that went out the door so i, I kind of got brought up in that but i'm interested in knowing like who are your female fitness heroes who do you really look up to and be like damn that's amazing wow well uh, you know obviously there's a lot of professional CrossFit athletes that I look at that I'm just like, that is just amazing. Um, You know, I watched, I I feel like if we're going way back, I would always watch the Olympians. Like, I don't care who it was, but I would always watch the Olympics and see all the female athletes and just be like, wow, that's so impressive. I didn't, I wasn't really an athlete growing up, so I didn't have a lot of close mentors in that way. Um, but I was always kind of like keeping my eye on these females who are doing awesome things. Now, you know, fast forwarding into the CrossFit community, um, I, I was just so intrigued, I think, by how amazing this was for females, this sport was for females. And so to kind of see the first professionals competing at the CrossFit Games, you're just, your mind is blown. Like, I, I don't think there's one CrossFitter especially female CrossFitters. I don't think there's one female CrossFitter who never, who didn't watch the Nasty Girls video, which is a workout of the three original, like the original CrossFit females. <laughs> We're just going to say that because that's kind of how it feels, doing a workout and doing the Nasty Girls workout. 
And I feel like that was the moment where everyone was like, jaw on the ground. What is this? And what are these females doing? Like, this is unheard of. And I don't think, I feel like they truly started a movement. I don't think they realized that. I mean, I, we've interviewed a couple of them and I don't think they realized the impact they had on, on um, girls in this community, but it was pretty powerful. Yeah. For me, I always look at the people in our community. So I have zero athletic backgrounds, like never played a sport ever growing up. Um, you know, really did not ever and ever consider myself to be athletic. And so for me, I find a lot more personally, um, motivation from seeing other kind of average people doing really well. And I remember in order to get started CrossFitting, and pick the gym that we wanted to do. I went around to all their Facebooks and I was looking at their photos and the gym that we ended up starting at, the reason I went, when we picked that gym, I mean, it was close to our house, whatever, but there were a million gyms close to our house. And this one, I, you know, had all these photos of these women who just looked like normal people and they were doing these really hard things. And I was like, okay, if they can do it, I can do it. And that's kind of more what I look for, I guess, in, in, in inspiration is somebody who I'm like, you know, if they can do it, I can do it because that's kind of what I need. Like I'm used to, you know, looking at the, like, yeah, the, the Olympic gymnasts and Olympic figure skaters and, you know, Serena Williams of the world and saying like, of course, you know, they have all the best coaches and all the best trainers and they've been doing this, but that doesn't mean anything for my life versus looking at like my neighbor or somebody who <clears throat> is, just killing it. And I'm like, okay, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. When you see like Betty from across the street, she's like, yeah, she snatched a hundred kilos. They're like, all right, sweet. Cool. That's awesome. I'm going to get off my ass and stop making excuses. Right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> right. so, As opposed to like, well, she loves the Olympic training center. So like, of course she did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned your search for a CrossFit box. What well, I'm sure there are some people that are listening that have maybe considered CrossFit, but they just, you know, there, there's that intimidation factor that with joining anything new, what would you guys say would be like a kind of a, a checklist of, okay, if you're going to try CrossFit and you're looking and comparing and contrasting, what do you want to look for in a, in a really good CrossFit gym? Yeah, I think honestly, the photos is part of it. Like think about the, First of all, think about your goals. If you want to, if you want to become a competitive CrossFitter, that's a completely different conversation. Yeah. You know, you need to go find the gym that has sent the teams and the individuals to the CrossFit Games and has reputable coaches. Ninety nine point nine 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 percent of us, that is never going to be a consideration. Um, so I would say, you know, go on their Facebook, look at their photos. Are they posting photos of their members? Do their members look like they're having fun? Are their members posting on the Facebook page of like, Hey guys, you know, we're all getting together for my birthday this Saturday. Come on over. Um, is the gym hosting events, social events, barbecues, fundraisers, whatever, like really gauging that community. To me, that's what you're looking for is a gym that is like you know, posting the PRs of their members, like they're proud of their members, they're putting it out there, their members are engaging right back with them. Um, you know, and unfortunately, unfortunately, the, the best way to tell that is through social media before you kind of break in. Um, and yeah, and I think, you know, find a gym where you see people who are like kind of more in your demographic. Typically, we don't always tell, you know, we tell people like, don't just walk in, you know, put yourself in a room where everybody looks like you. But if you're joining a CrossFit gym, you want people who are your same age. You want people who are, you know, if you're a young family, you want to meet other new young families. If you're, you know, single 25 year old, you want to meet other single 25 year olds. Like that's who you're going to click with. And that's who you're going to have the best relationships with. Um, yeah. And so that's what I would say is like really use those resources to get a sense of who else is going to the gym. Are they going out of their way to create that sense of community? Yeah, I love your point about the community. One of the things I, I talk about on my show is because people come to me for advice. They live, you know, somewhere that they're like, I wish I could come to your gym, but I live in Alaska. And I'm like, here's what you do. You know, if you, you find a gym and there's the expert and all you see on their website is pictures of the expert and he's like, you can be like me one day. Like you, you run, you run away. If they don't show you other people that they've been able to help because it's one thing, you know, we're supposed to be in good shape but it's totally different being in shape and teaching someone else how to reach their goals. That transference of knowledge 
is a total different ball game. So, uh, Joy, what would you say makes up a few of the qualities of a, of a good CrossFit coach? So we talked about the facility. Now let's talk coaching. Like, what are we looking for, like cert wise and things like that, but maybe personality fit? How, how do you find a good coach? Yeah. And I think that's very individual too, right? So I think like Claire said at the beginning, I, I don't think we're talking at all about people who truly want to compete in CrossFit. These are people who just want to come work out, have a good time, do CrossFit workout and join the community. So I think that first and foremost, that you really want to just feel welcome when you walk in the gym. You want to see that the coaches have set a tone that when people walk in, you're saying, hi, they're saying your name, they're engaging with people. They're not on their phones. Like kind of typical, obvious stuff. But the other thing is like, how are people moving? Is it look like people are moving safely or the coaches paying attention? Um, and, and I think just it's, it's one thing. I think there's so many different coaches out there and kind of like your style. So, you know, some people really like to be yelled at and like, you know, pushed really hard. Um, I would say to just stay open to those things because at first I was like pretty critical of like all the coaches. Cause I'd be like, this guy doesn't do this or she doesn't do this. And you kind of like pick it apart a little bit. And I think it also comes to you because I've had a lot of coaching experience. So I know exactly what I want. <laughs> So it's like, why don't you read my mind? But I think when you open up to your, <laughs> but I think when you open yourself up to like different styles of coaching, you learn a lot about yourself. And so, um, I mean, there was a, cl- a class I was in the other day and it was just like one small thing was driving me insane. And I was like, Joy, just sit with this. You're, you're feeling frustrated and I'm like super in touch with my feelings. So I was like, you're just having like some anger that needs to come out somewhere. Like, don't take it out on this coach. But it was like, it wasn't the coach. It was me. And I was like, just having this like moment where I just needed to like get this anger out of me. And it just like happened to be in that moment where whatever they were doing was driving the crap out of me. Um, so So I think that like overall you want to go in and you want to just feel like, oh, I like when this coach coaches today. Like that's how I feel with most of the coaches I have is when I pull up to the gym, if I see their car and I'm like, oh, cool, I get to have be coached by so-and-so today. Like there's been a few coaches when I walk in and I, or I see their car and I'm like, oh, so and so is coaching. Yeah, I was going to say like in that same vein, try to find a gym that has a little bit of diversity within their coaches. Like if the only person you're getting coached by is like Mr. 24 year old dude, you know, with the beard, like, you know, like that, you know, you may be I love that description for some reason that that's, well, I, I feel like, well, first of all, I feel like that describes 95% of I'm across the coaches, so you might have to dig. But, <laughs> and if you're a 24 year old with a beard out there who's like, I love coaching, I'm not trying to rag on you. I, what I'm saying is, you know, look for a gym that has a diverse, um, diverse experiences. Like I have coached for gyms before, you know, and I am still in a lot of ways, a scaled athlete. You know, I'm a mom. I was pregnant for a lot of the time that I was, have been coaching. And that allowed me to bring a completely different perspective to the table, you know, and I'm somebody who never was an athlete growing up. I'm somebody who had to start at the absolute ground zero and build my way up into CrossFit. And I felt like that gave me a great perspective on helping those types of people who were in the same shoes that I had been in of like, I am totally out of my comfort zone here. What do I do? And I could really empathize with them versus, you know, the guy who comes in and has been an athlete his whole life. And like, yeah, on the surface, that might be more who you think you want to be your coach, but it might be harder for them to really understand the mental struggles that you're going through just to get your foot in the door every day. And so you know, find those coaches too, that you can relate to and you feel like and can relate to you and like actually care about the issues that you have and aren't just there to be your cheerleader. Yeah. You don't want to feel like you're just somebody's paycheck. That's, that's never a good feeling. Now, Joy, you piqued my interest. What was the coach doing that was pissing you off? Oh, you don't have um, to say it, but no, 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 no. It was, I, it was something that hold on, hold on. Oh, they weren't talking loud enough. It was driving me crazy. Cause it was like a newer coach. And it was kind of a big class. And I've been going to this gym for so long that I was just like, I I couldn't hear. And it was like kind of chaotic. And I don't like disorganization. Like when I show up, you better start on time. You better take me through the class. You better kick my butt and like, like push me. And this coach was just being so quiet. And like, it wasn't, it wasn't like a, like a confidence thing. It was just like, kind of low energy. And it, I work at five 30 in the morning too. I'm like, I need the music loud. And I need you to be yelling because I need to wake up. <laughs> and so like, I just had this moment where I was like, Oh my God, I can't stand an hour with her. And I was just like, kind of getting pissed. <laughs> yeah. I worked through it. It's fine. I survived. It's all good now. Yeah. I, I, when I train in new instructors at my facility, 
that's the biggest like, hurdle we have to cross because they think they're just screaming so loud. And I get them on the microphone and I'm like, yeah, I like getting a hold of moms that have children. I'm like, you know, when you get pissed at your kids and you yell at them in the back of the car, that's the voice I need right now. Oh, yeah. But, and I, I I'll turn to, this workout around. Don't make me turn this workout oh, around. Don't make me turn. And I used to coach cycling too. And when the mics would go out, I would have to yell over music to like a room of 40 people biking with the bikes going. So I'm like, projection is, I'm, I'm good with that. I, I'm yeah. good with projection. But yeah, when people don't do that, I'm just like, <sighs> yeah. I feel you. I feel you, Joy. Now, uh, I know we're running short on time, but I have a couple quick questions that uh, I want to make sure that we get to because I'm interested in what you have to say about it. Um, one is, what are you guys fired up about with, with fitness in general right now? It could be about CrossFit or something else, but what trend or something that's going well that you feel like that's really exciting? Oh, I just, I know this, this may sound cheesy, but I feel like inclusivity is has been in my mind a lot. Um, and by that, I just mean, I think we're expanding what it means to be healthy and well. Uh, I think that we're moving away from the more is better mentality. And I really, really appreciate that. I think that will make us a lot healthier. And as much as I hate the word balance, we will be more balanced, um, meaning that we won't have to spend our lives in the gym. I don't think that's what gyms are for. I think gyms are there to get you healthy. And I think your life is worth living outside of the gym and meant to be lived outside of the gym. So that's probably in a nutshell, what I'd say I'm pretty jazzed about. Awesome. And unless you own a gym, then I want everyone to stay o only go to the gym. <laughs> exactly. Only Just go to your gym. Only go to the gym. That's it. Uh, we're doing a, a uh, during the holidays, I do a class attendance challenge and I give them a free month of membership and it's a partner thing. And through three weeks, <laughs> this is, I feel like a, a bad person for doing this. These people, they get so fired up though. Through three weeks, the leading team had attended 76 classes in three weeks. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's insane. And that's a little crazy. That's a little one, crazy. One of the women is British and she has this amazing accent, but she had like lost her voice and she just comes in and she goes, Adam, my voice or my body hates me right now. And I was like, oh my God. But they just want to win. Go I'm like, off. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go yeah, sit in a exactly. bath. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Claire, what yes. are you fired up about? Okay. I hate to do this, Joy. The word is inclusiveness. Inclusivity is not a word. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, it's, those are they're just those little things. This is what I do. I make up words also. So I know it's hard, you know, like coming up with anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I would say it's very similar to that is just that sense of feeling like everybody, you know, the table is getting longer. Um, we're welcoming more and more people, more and more people are feeling comfortable enough to say, Hey, my story is also worth hearing as well. Um, and I think on a personal level, like I, my fitness has ebbed and flowed so much over the past couple of years with, you know, having been pregnant and then had a kid and then motherhood and then getting pregnant again. And, I feel like in that time, there has been such a shift um, where I feel like there has, there's a new space for even my own story of like, you know, what? I'm not in the gym every day and that's still okay. And instead of maybe a couple of years ago, more people would have been like, you know, don't like, don't be preaching laziness, like get in the gym, you know, no excuses, no rest days. Like, you know, you need to be finding a way to get there. Now people are kind of more like, you know what? do what you need to do, like do what feels good for your body. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that shift towards, we kind of always talk about it as being like bigger picture health, like that shift towards like, you know what, at the end of the day, as long as you're making more healthy choices than unhealthy choices, you know, just don't stress out about it. And because actually it turns out stress is like the most toxic thing you can do to yourself. So we've all kind of been like shooting ourselves in the foot this whole time. Damn it. Um, damn it. I know. I was, I was going, it was, everything was going so perfectly for there for a while. Um, but yeah, just that kind of sense of, you know, the, it, if you miss one or two workouts, it's not the end of the world. You're not going to like die at early death. Um, and, you know, it's okay to be honest about what your body needs and like, you know, pull back a little bit if you need to. And yeah. Yeah, I I totally believe in that too. And it's it's uh 
like you said, it, it's that holistic approach of people going, it kind of, it could be a double-edged sword because people be like, I need to do everything and I have to have my recovery mapped out and use the, the Russian periodized, you know, hot and cold sauna protocol. And then Tim Ferriss told me that I need to do 75 kettlebell swings every day. But if we don't go down the deep end on that, we just understand that we're just taking steps every day to be healthy. And like you said, we're winning in the moment of decision and the more good decisions versus bad decisions. We win the overall game and we're, and we're good to go. Yeah. And we even talked, I think Ben Grant, Ben Greenfield and maybe one, a couple of their folks recently about like, you know, we're all so worried about these tiny little decisions, like, well, which creatine should I be taking? Or like, you know, blah, blah, blah. What's my heart rate variability? Like how much sleep are you getting? Yeah. You know, like how much water are you drinking? Like, let's focus on these. Are you eating enough food? Like, are you fighting with your spouse every night? Like what's your stress level at work? Not like, you know, which one, which brand of fish oil should you be taking? Yeah. A lot of us are focusing on kind of the wrong things. We also recently talked to a gal who runs the 800 gram challenge. I don't know if you've heard about this. It's like a fruit and veggie challenge basically. And one of the questions we got for her so many times was like, well, what about, what if I eat too much fruit? And she was like, you know what, if you're worried about eating too much fruit, chances are you're focusing on the wrong problem. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're right. Like at the end of the day, if you had a little bit too much fruit that day and that's the worst thing that you did, like you are doing great actually. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be okay. Yeah. We'll be okay. Um, now, uh, I want to make sure that we give you guys a chance to let people know how to connect with you uh, as we do in podcast land. Uh, I definitely want people to check out Girls Gone Wad. It's amazing. It's a great resource. I, it's one of my favorite things about podcasting is I feel like I've kind of nurtured this community and now I get to add tools to the transformation toolbox. And that's just, you guys, your show is an amazing resource. And I feel like you're, you approach things from a real perspective, relatable. Uh, so I definitely want everybody to hit the subscribe button. Make sure you leave them a rating and review, all that good stuff. But where, if, if you want to dive a little bit deeper and connect with you, uh, where's the best place to do that? Yeah. So to your point, we're available, you know, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, all those places. Um, you, the best place to get in touch with us is just on email. You can send us an email, girlsgonewad at gmail.com. We read every single email that we get. Um, we don't always, you know, respond in full honesty, but anytime, if you send us something and you think, I really want them to write back and we don't write back, just email us again. We will not think you're annoying. We'll be like, okay, great. Hey, we're glad that you think this. Um, Instagram, we are girls gone wild podcast, Facebook girls gone wild and, um, you know, DMing us it's a little bit hit or miss, uh, but we do read you know, pretty much everything. So I would say if you really want to get in touch with us, we love, 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 love reading emails. We love recommendations. Um, you know, if you just want to like tell us your life story, you just need like an outlet that day, send it our way. We would be honored. Awesome. We like to listen. We're good listeners. <laughs> yeah. And that's why you're good podcasters because you guys, you know, listen to your audience and I see it in every show that you put out. I'm like, okay, this is them responding to what their audience needs. And that's, that's what it's all about. Now, I like to leave my audience, speaking of audiences, I like to leave my audience in some form of action. So you've inspired them. We've talked a lot about stuff. Uh, just a quick tidbit from each one of you here, uh, as I know it's getting late, but if there's somebody out there that's listening, that's a little bit nervous about getting started, and maybe they've been curious, they've been a little bit CrossFit curious, all right? And they have been thinking about it, uh, but they've been, you know, but now we've kind of tipped them over, over the edge and they're like, okay, I think I'm ready to do this. In the next 24 hours, what would be an action step that you get, would encourage them to do just to get the ball rolling? I would really encourage them to find a gym in their community that's close by because you're not going to go to a gym if it's far and sign up for an elements class or sign up for a free class. Like get in touch. You don't even have to commit yet, but just send the email or make the phone call. Like there's always going to be a contact form on the website and just send a, send a message and see what happens. And if you get a nice message back from the owner, then you can be like, all right, the next step is happening. Okay. Now I'm planning something like don't overthink it. Just take a small step and then see how it feels. My action item would be to email us, email Joy and Claire and let us know, Hey, I heard. Yeah. You if you're scared, we can talk through scared, it. We will be your cheerleaders. And whether that's CrossFit or signing up for a triathlon or starting your own podcast, whatever that little thing is that you have been sitting on forever and you just, you feel like, man, I just can't stop thinking about it. Send us an email. Tell us all about it. 
we will be your cheerleaders. We love, love, love to do that. And um, we, you know, girls got a lot at gmail.com. Just head there right now. There you go. So if, if Oprah's listening and she emails you and she's like, I need to jump into my CrossFit routine, like how psyched are you guys going to be? I, yeah. I listened to Oprah, the Oprah episode. You'll get on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> Oprah, we're coming. We are at your, we're, we'll be there right very soon. Please have a driver meet us at the airport. Yes. Like, what's the most like amazing, like if you could envision Oprah doing an exercise, like a CrossFit workout or exercise, like what would be like the ultimate that you would just like love to see her do? Oh my gosh. I feel like Oprah would kill it at deadlift. Yeah, she would. She would be an amazing deadlifter. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. going to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Got to well, Oprah. If you're out there, we know you're out there. We know you hear our thoughts. You're like Santa Claus. She's totally. <laughs> you know is. when we're sleeping. You know when we're awake. You know when we want you to do deadlifts. Yes, <laughs> lifting Oprah. I think we just found a title for the, yeah. the podcast. <laughs> deadlifts. Oprah deadlifts. I mean, this the SEO has to be great with anytime you put Oprah in it. I'm yes, one hundred percent. We just did that for you. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> Yes. To most, oh my gosh. most downloads ever. All right, ladies, <laughs> I appreciate you so much. Uh, I know that uh, you guys are both super, super busy, but I just, I'm really, really proud of you. And I'm thankful because you are blazing a trail that my daughter is going to reap the benefits from as she you know, enters a different world of fitness as she grows up. So I'm super appreciative. And I just thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. It's really nice. Thank you so much. It's been a really fun time to talk to you. All right, everybody. I appreciate you listening in. We've inspired you. You've got your action items. And now it's time to get out there and own it every meal, every workout, every day. And I will see you on the next episode. Hey, thanks for hanging out after the episode. Joy and Claire rocked it. Make sure you check them out on Instagram and follow the Girls Gone Wad podcast. You won't regret it. Something else you will not regret is checking out my 10-day free trial of my Transformation Reboot program. Transformation Reboot, that program is my jam. It is my thing. It is my passion right now. We are making a real impact. The issue is I suck at selling things, and I figured the best way to sell this unique program is to let you experience it firsthand. Uh, So the way you're going to get to do the 10-day free trial is you need to use the link that is in the show notes. And if you are not listening to this podcast as it's being released, in case something has changed, that link doesn't work, something like that, just send me a direct message on Instagram at Million Pound Mission, and I'll get you set up for a 10-day trial inside of the group. Uh, the issue with selling this, it's hard to describe because it's not a brand new shiny nutrition program. It's not a brand new shiny fitness program. It's more about coaching. It's about community. It's about accountability. It's about consistency. It's about always working from a game plan and just taking steady steps together towards our transformation goals. So I want you to experience it firsthand. You get to do one-on-one chats with me, small group weekly chats with all of our community members. We've got a rowdy Facebook group where we're doing challenges. It is truly unique, special, and I think that it may very well be the missing link in your transformation process. So check out the link in the show notes or send me a DM on Instagram at Million Pound Mission. I will hook you up with 10 days for free inside the Transformation Reboot program. I'll see you inside the group.